In this video, we're going to look at more special factoring techniques. Uh, we're still going to look at problems with two terms, and these are going to be sum or difference of cubes. So we can have plus or minus with these problems. Uh, they will always be two terms, and they have to be perfect cubes. So you need to be able to get a cube root. Uh, I generated a chart just of our first five perfect cubes. It's good to keep those in mind because that just makes it faster for you. All right, so I'm going to teach this as a pattern uh, more than just memorizing a formula. The formulas are on your note template, but I'm going to develop it as a pattern. All right, so when you see this problem, the first thing you want to do is to take your cube root. So take the cube root of x cubed. It will be just one of them, so just an x cube root of y cubed will be just a y. So to factor it, we're going to first use those pieces with the sign of the problem. That makes our first set of parentheses. Our second set of parentheses on this kind is a trinomial. It's the only kind we've seen like that. You might think of cubes and trinomial. Um, for our signs in the trinomial, remember if you multiply this, that would be six multiplications, and you're going to get it back to two terms. You better get some canceling. So to help us get canceling, we're going to need the opposite sign here. If we have minus there, we're going to need a plus here. All right? Last sign is always plus. You can think last thought of the day should be positive. And this one is the opposite of the first one. Now, to get the other three pieces that go in here, you go back to the roots. I'm going to take the first root times itself. That will go in the first spot. First root times the second one will go in the second spot. Last root times itself will go in the third spot. So first root times itself. x times x gives us x squared. First root times the second one x times y will give us xy. Last one times itself, y times y will give us y squared. And it's finished. Um, this trinomial, even though we have something to the second power, we don't have to worry about it factoring more. It is not going to factor more when it comes out of a cube. Here's another one that you could use um, with first and last as your cubes um, to help you memorize. I'm still going to go with the pattern. All right, so I have two terms, doesn't matter if it's plus or minus, and I have exponents of three. So cubes is going to work. My first job is get the cube root, so I need f and l. So I'm going to use those pieces with the sign of the problem. That makes my first set of parentheses. Second set will be a trinomial. So I'm going to put my signs in. The first sign will be the opposite to get canceling. Last sign is always plus. And then I'm going to take the first term times itself. So first squared. Then I'm going to take the first one times the second one. So first times last. And I'm going to take the last times itself. So L squared. And we're finished. This trinomial will not do more because it came from a cube problem. So for this problem, we do have two terms, um, an exponent of 3 that tells us to try cubes, and 8 is also a perfect cube. So it's going to work. Get your cube roots. For x cubed will be just x. For 8, the cube root is 2. We'll use these pieces with the sign of the problem. That makes the first set of parentheses. The second set is a trinomial. For your signs, the first sign is the opposite. That was minus, so this will be plus. Last one is always plus. And then you want all the combinations of multiplying the roots. So you're going to take the first one times itself. So your first one squared. The first one times the second one. So x times 2 is 2x. And the last one times itself, or the last one squared, will give us 4. Another problem. It is two terms, exponent of 3, so we're going to try cubes. So cube root of x cubed would be just x. Cube root of 64y cubed. 64 is a perfect cube. The cube root is 4 and a y. So we'll use those pieces with the sign of the problem. That makes the first set of parentheses. Second set will be a trinomial. 
for our sines. The first sign will be the opposite of that one. So plus, last one is always plus. And then we'll take all the combinations of our roots. So the first one times itself, or the first one squared. The first one times the second one. So x times 4y will be 4xy. And the last one squared, or the last one times itself. So 4y times 4y gives us 16y squared. Our next problem is also going to be cubes. Uh, it is two terms and exponents of three. Um, this one has plus inside. If you memorized it as a pattern, you really don't need a different pattern for the ones with plus. So you still take the cube roots. And your first parentheses will always use the sign of the problem with those cube roots. So this one will be x plus y because that was the sign of the problem. Second set of parentheses. Your first sign to get canceling, remember, is the opposite of that sign. So if the first one's plus, this one has to be minus. Last one is always plus. Then you want the combinations of the roots. So first root times itself, or first root squared. First root times the second root, and the last root squared, or the last root times itself. Our next one, um, two terms. We have exponents of three, so we're going to try cubes. First cube root is just f, second cube root is just l. So we're going to use these pieces with the sign of the problem. That makes our first set of parentheses. Second set of parentheses will be a trinomial. For your signs, the first sign will need to be the opposite of that. So if that one's plus, this one's minus. Last one's always plus. Now you're going to go back to your roots. So the first one times itself, or the first one squared. The first one times the second one. And the last one times itself, or the last one squared. Next we have x cubed plus 1. So we do have two terms. We have an exponent of 3, so we're going to try cubes. Cube root of x cubed would be just x. Cube root of 1 is 1. So use those pieces with the sign of the problem, x plus 1. Second set will be a trinomial for your signs. The first one will be the opposite of that. So if that's plus, this has to be minus. Last one is always plus. Then your combination of your roots. So your first root times itself. x times x is x squared. The first root times the second one, so x times 1 is just x. And the last root times itself. 1 times 1 is 1. Next we have x cubed plus 125. Two terms, exponent of 3, we're going to try cubes. So we get the cube root will be x and it will be a 5. So we'll use those pieces with the sign of the problem. So we have x plus 5. Second set will be a trinomial for our signs. The first sign will be the opposite of that. Last sign is always plus. Then we'll go back to our roots. The first root times itself, or the first root squared. First root times the second root, so x times 5 is the same as 5x. And the last root times itself, 5 times 5 is 25. For this problem, we do have two terms, exponent of 3. We just have to make sure that we have perfect cubes here. 27, yes, that's a perfect cube. Our cube root is 3 and an x. 64, our cube root is 4. So we'll use these pieces with the sign of the problem, 3x plus 4. Second set of parentheses will be a trinomial. For your signs, the first sign will be the opposite. Last sign will be plus. Then we go back to our roots. We're going to take the first root times itself, or the first root squared. So 3x times 3x gives us 9x squared. We'll take the first root times the second one. 3x times 4 gives us 12x. The last root times itself, 4 times 4 is 16. For this problem, we have two terms, an exponent of 3. So we will try cubes. Get the cube root for 8. Cube root is 2. 
I also need the cube root of x cubed is x. Cube root of 125 is 5. You're going to use these pieces with the sign of the problem. So this one is 2x minus 5. Second set will be a trinomial. For your signs, the first sign will be the opposite of that. So minus, here we'll have plus. Last one's always plus. Then we'll take the combinations of multiplying the roots. So the first root times itself or the first root squared. 2x times 2x gives us 4x squared. The first root times the second one, 2x times 5, is 10x. The last root times itself, 5 times 5, gives 25. For this problem, it is two terms exponent of 3, but when we get ready to try cubes, we have to backtrack because 3 is not a perfect cube. We cannot get a cube root. So look back and see if you have a GCF. And really, you want to think about GCF first. All right, so if 3 goes into 81, we can take it out. And it does. So we'll do a GCF. 3 is coming outside. That will leave me x cubed plus 27. Now we have to look at our parentheses and see if it will do more. Now it is cubes. So we'll get the cube roots. For x cubed it will be x. For 27 the cube root is 3. And I'm going to just go ahead and bring this GCF down first. All right. These pieces with the sign of the problem. Second set is still a trinomial. First sign is the opposite. So that was plus. This will be minus. Last sign is always plus. And now we'll take the combinations of the roots. So the first root times itself or the first root squared will give us x squared. First root times the second one, x times 3, will be 3x. And the last root times itself will be 9. We need to go with a GCF first in this problem. Um, first of all, for the x's, we have x squared in both. So x squared is going to come out. For the y's, we have y in both. So we can actually take out a y squared. One set of parentheses. Remember, we'll have as many terms as the original problem in that set of parentheses. So for the first piece, we actually have the whole thing, but you have to have something in here. Remember, it would multiply by a 1 to get back there. For the second one, we want to get minus. The x squared we have, we have two y's, we want 5, so we're missing 3. Right. Now we have to see if our parentheses will keep going because we have something in there to the third power. So anything to the second power or higher, try it. All right. So our GCF is going to come down. This one, we are going to be able to do cubes. So we use 1, and we're going to use y. So those pieces with the sign of the problem. Second set will be a trinomial. First sign is the opposite. So if our, ours in the problem is minus, this will be plus. Last one's always plus. And now you're going to take all the combinations of the roots. So you're going to take the first root times itself. 1 times 1 is 1. First root times the second one, 1 times y is y. And the last root times itself, y times y is y squared. For this problem, we do have a GCF. And you really want to do that first, even though you could go with cubes. It'll be messy if you do that first. So we'll go with a GCF. We have a y cubed in each one. So it can go to the outside. That will leave us 27 minus x cubed. Right. And then we'll see, can we do cubes? We can. So cube root of 27 is 3. Cube root of x cubed is x. Right. We'll bring down our GCF. And then we'll use our pieces with the sign of the problem. So our roots with our sign of the problem. Second set will be a trinomial. For our signs, the first sign will be the opposite. Last one's always plus. We'll take the first root times itself. 3 times 3 is 9. First root times the second one, 3 times x is 3x. Last root times itself, x times x is x squared. 
right, last problem. Uh, for this one, it looks to me like cubes. I would have to go to a calculator to see about a cube root of 343. And it is, our cube root is 7. So we will do cubes, x and y for the first term. And the second one, our cube root is 7. So we'll use those pieces with the sign of the problem. Second set will be a trinomial. Your first sign will be the opposite of that. So this one will be minus. Last one is always plus. Now we want to take the combination of all the roots. So the first root squared or the first root times itself. xy times xy is x squared y squared. First root times the second one, xy times 7 is 7xy. Last one times itself, 7 times 7 is 49.